Today on Food Journey, we're making something really cool with local ingredients, fish and cassava. Cassava doesn't really feature on my daily menus, and I headed off to find out a little bit more about this versatile staple from someone who knows, an expert cassava consultant, Mr. Bruno Orgi. Cassava starch is used as fillers in the confectionery industry, like uh, things like uh, uh, meat pie. You can use cassava starch or cassava flour as fillers, you know, to make it fuller and mouthful, you know. Also, uh, in biscuit industry, both cassava starch and cassava flour can also be used, you know, to enrich the body. But in this environment, the most pertinent one is composite flour, which we want to use as a substitute to minimize the quantum of wheat flour used. Cassava flour is trending, especially those who are conscious about their health. You know, most uh, products like wheat, oats, barley have gluten concentration, but cassava flour has no gluten. So in Western Europe, a lot of people now con con consume cassava flour because it's gluten-free. And that has really increased the demand for cassava flour. People who are health conscious are looking for a gluten-free diet, and the destination is cassava flour. Uh, Gary is very strategic to our food security in this environment. And for Gary to be really nutritious, the cyanide must be removed. So um, the cyanide in Gary is removed one through fermentation. You first of all put the uh, cassava grits in bags and put it in the um, mechanical press. You press out the hydrocyanic acid from the grit. After that, you leave it for at least 24 hours so that the uh, hydrocyanic acid which contains the cyanide is drained off. So part of the cyanide is removed. Then finally, during frying, during frying, certain significant portion of the cyanide is also removed. So by so doing, the gare has minimum content of 10% cyanide. When a cyanide is consumed in an unusual proportion, it causes goiter. You probably see in the village some women with protruding neck here, and that is goiter, and um, it's very dangerous. It also has other side uh, uh, infections. Uh, it can also exacerbate high blood pressure. It can also uh, cause severe headache and some other ill treatments. So that's why every gare or every product done with cassava must contain a minimum of 10% of cyanide acid. We are the highest producer of cassava in the world, producing over 53 million tons per annum. Unfortunately, most of these are produced with hose and knives. We need to mechanize the production of cassava as well as the total agri uh, mechanization. If we can mechanize more, we can produce more. If we can produce more, we can now produce more starch, more flour, more chips, and export to the rest of the world. While having enough for food, we can also have enough for export, thereby diversifying our economy. Ready to put cassava to the test? And we're going to be doing just that as I create two innovative dishes using local products. I'll be making a tea-smoked fish cake and cassava chips. 
I've got a beautiful medium-sized red snapper to work with today, and it's going to go through a number of different processes, filleting, smoking, and frying. Being brave and experimenting with fusion tastes shouldn't be scary. In fact, to borrow a famous quote from Michelle Obama, she says, First, let's start out with sharpening those knives. Having a good set of knives in the kitchen is essential. Today, I'm using a filleting knife and a cleaver. So for the fish cakes, the first thing we have to do is tackle the fish. Now this seems like a daunting task, but it's not as difficult as it looks. A couple of tries and you'll get it right. I've got this beautiful snapper here, and you can see that it has been gutted. So we've got a nice pink, fresh cavity there. And the idea is to get two fillets off of this fish. One fillet here, the other fillet here. And don't think we're getting rid of the head, we're gonna use that too. So let's start off with cutting off the head. I've got a filleting knife here and I've got a chopping knife here. And I'm going to go just behind the gills and slice down with some force on each side and get this off. A good firm knock will get you through this harder bone structure. Hooray! We've got it off. I think that's the hardest part. So we're going to put the fish back over here. Now for the filleting. I'm using this knife, it's a filleting knife and it bends a bit so that it can move about the flesh. Run the sharp blade down the back of the fish, letting it get as close to the central bone as possible. should be able to see the exposed bone structure to know you're on the right track. Snap off that fillet at the top near the head. Now flip over and do the same to the other side. We're almost there now. Hoorah! Two fillets! Now what you do with this is put it in some water with a little bit of seasoning and you'll have some lovely fish stock. So I'm going to keep that for later. We are using the head. So done. Phew! Here are our two beautiful fillets ready for tea smoking. Next we're going to tea smoke the fish using everyday ingredients you can find in your own kitchen. Tea, rice, flour and sugar. Originally a Chinese technique, it's easy enough for anyone to do. So let's get started smoking this fish. The first thing we need is we need a wok. This is because it's nice and round and a bit deep. It's the best thing to use, but if you've got a chicken roasting tray or whatever you can, part of the reason why I'm using this wok is because the grate that I'm going to sit the fish in is round and it kind of fits nicely in here. You can use a regular round grate from your oven, but I don't have one, so I'm using what I do have. Sometimes you have to do that. And you're wondering why I'm using sugar, flour, and rice, and tea, I'm sure. Well, the sugar and the flour and the rice are gonna be layered on top of each other, actually on top of this bit of foil in the wok. The first thing I have to do is grease the wok putting a little bit of oil. Vegetable oil is good. If you use olive oil, you may find that it burns very quickly, which we don't want. So I've done that, and I'm also going to grease the grate a little bit because I'm using that for the fish, and I don't want it to stick. I want it to come right off after I'm done. Okay. Now, time for the foil. Scrunch up the foil to fit in the base of your pan. Sprinkle a generous amount of sugar on the foil. Next, some flour. 
It doesn't matter what type, really. Some rice. Then the tea. Position your grate in the middle and lay on the fish. I'm putting mine skin down, exposing the flesh to the smoke. Everything has been layered now and I'm just going to cover this with a wide cover that will seal all the edges up and take it to the stove. Leave it covered and wait for the smoking to begin. Time to check that fish. There's smoke collecting now. And I'm going to flip the head and move on. These are the extra things that are going to go into the fish cake mix. I've got green pepper. And you want to dice this nice and small. Take your time and get them all uniform so they look like little green emeralds. Keep your fingers out of the way. Use a sharp knife. So we've got some beautiful green gems there. And I'm also going to do some yellow because you all know I love color when I'm cooking. We've got to eat with our eyes keeping everything nice and uniform. Nice little perfect dice. And add these to the mix. Go over these again. Add those. We've added yellow for more color. Onion. And spring onion. Chop up some coriander too. The fish is out and ready for the next move. So this fish has cooled down now for about 10 minutes and it's now uh, hand friendly. So I'm going to start by picking off the flesh from the fish. These lovely cheeks in the head very, very delicious. It mustn't be missed. Continue gently breaking up the delicate flesh, removing the bones as you go. These ones are quite large. So now that we've removed all the flesh from the fish, it's now time for us to add the other ingredients that are going to help us create this beautiful fish cake. I have to tell you that it smells very green tea-ish, and I'm going to taste a piece just to see how that turned out. Mmm. It's nice and soft and supple, and it has a subtle taste of green tea, just what I wanted. Now we're going to add the other ingredients. The peppers, the onion, and the coriander. A lot of little bits of veggies, good for you. And to this, we're going to add some breadcrumbs. Now, I just made these by putting some pieces of bread into my blender and blending them, instant breadcrumbs. And in fact, these have been in the freezer for about a week because I made too many the last time I used them. And you can do the same thing. No need to buy breadcrumbs. In this goes, and I've got about a cup and a half. Let's use all of it. Now, pepper. You know, I like it hot. Putting that in. A little salt. Because we didn't put anything on the fish, remember? We kept it au naturel. It's a bit of salt. And a grinding of black pepper, which I love. A good grinding. Get your little arm work out here. Almost. That's enough. 
and now. Mix this all together, gently combining the ingredients well and add a fresh egg. This one is farm fresh actually. It will bind the whole mixture together. This mixture has been thoroughly mixed and you can see that everything has sort of come together. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in the fridge for a little while just to set a bit and then shallow fry it in the pan. Mm. I'm also using these gorgeous tomatoes you saw to make some ketchupy sauce for our chips. It's simple. Just blend tomato, onion, green pepper and a little water in a blender and blend. In a pot, cook out a little tomato paste. Pour in your blended mix. Add some pepper, vinegar, some salt or all-purpose seasoning to taste and cover. Let's have a look at that now and see how it's going. Mmm, that smells ketchupy, and it looks great. While the fish is in the fridge setting a bit, we can get started on the second dish. I'm going to be making cassava chips. Now, Cassava is a tuber which can be eaten cooked or processed into cassava flour or gari. To start preparing for boiling, it's important to slice off all the skin and remove the fibrous inner line which runs through each tuber. And I think we've got it all out. And that can go into some cold water. Cassava has traces of toxicity, so it has to be really thoroughly rinsed and boiled for a good long time to remove any toxic substances. Never eat it raw. Add a generous pinch of salt and put your carefully peeled and rinsed cassava in and cover. Boil this for about 25 minutes or a little longer if you like. Now it's time to fry our fish cakes. This is nice and set. Scoop out heaped tablespoons of the fish mixture and shallow fry in your favorite oil. Flip them gently when the edges look golden. Flip them over in the same order you put them in. When both sides are crispy, take them out and drain excess oil on absorbent kitchen paper napkin. I'm really happy with these. They're coming out just great. And with that ketchup, mmm, it's going to be marvelous. Don't forget that cassava. It should be soft all the way through. If not, let it go some more. Guess what else is ready? The ketchup we made, reduced to a sweet, velvety sauce. A sprig of parsley, and it's picture perfect. The cassava is cooked now, and ready to be cut into friable strips. Drop them in very hot vegetable or groundnut oil. Mmm, look at that sizzle. I'm ready for these. When they're golden brown, remove them and drain them in a metal sieve. Don't they look fantastic? All this crispy goodness. And give them a good dusting of my special masala sprinkles. And voila, it's ready. So I'm really excited right now because all this beautiful food has been prepared and no, I am not going to eat it all by myself. I have a very special guest here today with me. Her name is Brycey Bassi. She is an 
actress of TV and film. She's also a campaign manager and a virtuoso violinist. So I'm very impressed. And I hope she's equally as impressed with this food today. Hi, Brycey. Hi, hello. How are you? Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, of course. And this looks just as amazing as your outfit. Oh, girl. <laughs> thank you so much. This looks good. All right. This so looks and smells what we have is we have green tea smoked fish cakes. Did you say green tea? I did. Okay, I this did. This is the first time I'm hearing green tea being used for fish cakes. So your task today, my dear, is to try everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. So can I serve you a fish cake? Yes, just remember that the camera does add on 10 pounds, and so I don't want to eat too much. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll help you with all the rest. I'm just joking. Thank you. <laughs> And then help yourself to, I mean, I'm just going to put my fingers in oh, here you're and more grab one. And I'm going, to, I'm going to wait for you. Should we double dip together? Okay, let's dip together. Cheers. 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 <laughs> oh, my mm. God. Mm. <laughs> that. Oh, I don't even know what to say. Another dip. It is so spicy. It's just fluffy. What do you think? It's so good. You got that smoky flavor. This is amazing. You also got that tea flavor in there. Delicate. Lovely. <laughs> I'm stealing that last piece. <laughs> For everybody who's watching at home, just know I'm having a fantastic time. <laughs> this mm. is so good. And I hope that everybody at home tries this. These are all local ingredients, economically friendly mm -hmm. ingredients. It won't cost you an arm and a leg. You must go out and try this. So, from us on Food Journey, it's goodbye and see you next time. You're gonna eat We're gonna eat all this. Yes, <laughs> thank you. You really should have a go at making one or all of these exciting recipes. The fish filleting, tea smoking, fish cake making, ketchup preparation, the cassava chips, remembering all the rules, and of course, the eating. Cheers. Cheers. Be inspired to try something new. Go on, be brave.